Hi there, thank you for joining me. I'm Tracy, and this is a DIY upcycling channel where we take pre-owned items and turn them into one-of-a-kind purses, clothing, accessories. And today, I want to make kind of a funky, whimsical skirt. And my inspiration was, or is, this oops, quilt topper. I found this at my Goodwill and bought it for $8. How gorgeous is that? Someone made this and I want to let you know, I do respect the craft, the craftsmanship and the time that gets put in to these beautiful pieces, but I don't let it stop me from creating the vision that is in my mind. So this will be part of it. And then I have a old pair of pants that I don't wear anymore. I like the light color because there's some light blue in the quilt. Um, so that'll be part of it. And I found this shower curtain on Amazon. I'll put a link in my description if you decide you want to make something like this. But it's this giant girl which i think is kind of funny you know you gotta have a little bit of a sense of humor and i love sense of humor in my creations and so it has all these little butterflies and so this will i'll cut this out and this will be the applique on the skirt so let's get to it the jeans are going to be the top portion of the skirt the first thing I'm doing is measuring down nine inches from the very top, making a mark there, nine inches down there, and in the center, nine inches. Now, I'm going to line up this mark with this mark and make a line and do the same on this side. And now I'm just going to cut that out. I'm going to cut through both layers at the same time. My goal here is to avoid that zipper, but give me a little room for sewing. And I'm cutting a little bit through the pocket on the back. I'm going to lose those pockets. Now I partially cut through those pockets. I'm just going to finish cutting them off. I'm using my electric scissors. I'll put a link in my description. They're great if you have arthritis or tendonitis like I do. Okay, so this is what I have. This little micro mini. I tried this on. I need to decide how to cut the quilt. So I tried this on and this is really high-waisted on me. They were high-waisted jeans to start with. And so I measured down from the bottom of this skirt to about mid-calf because I want to add some tulle ruffle at the bottom, and I got 26 inches. So I will want to cut my quilt 26 inches tall, and then I want a pleated skirt. So I measured across the skirt, I got 19 inches, and I have to double that because there's two sides here, so that's 38 inches all the way around. Now, if I double that to give me some pleating, that will give me, let's see, 38, 76 inches. Well, my quilt is 82 inches long, and I'm just going to go with that. I don't need to be exact on the 76, a little extra fullness. Is just fine so I'm going to cut my quilt 26 inches long all the way across and it's already 82 inches and that works for me okay now I have my piece all cut out I am going to sew the ends together so I'm going to put right sides together, line it up over here at the top, and I am just going to use a straight stitch, quarter inch seam allowance, and cruise all the way down 
the side. My seams will be raw on the inside. You can serge yours, finish yours however you want. I'll go get this sewn. Now I need to attach the quilt to the skirt with some pleating. And there's lots of ways to do pleating and sharing. This is just my way of choice. I have this turned inside out and I also have my skirt turned inside out. And I'm going to sew this over top of the skirt half an inch. So what I want to do is find the edge. I have this laid out nice and flat. Now I'm going to take one edge and sew it to or pin it to the side seam right here. And then I'm going to go to the other edge and sew it to the side seam half an inch up. Now I'm going to go to the center of the quilt and pin it to the center of the back of the skirt. And then I'm going to find the center between this pin and this pin and pin it to the center of the jeans between the pins. And then I will just keep getting smaller and smaller. Here's the center now between these two pins of the skirt and the quilt, pin that half an inch up. And I will just keep getting smaller and smaller until I have enough pleating so that I'm comfortable when I take it to my machine. I'm going to take one of my old cutting boards and lay it in between the layers of the jeans. That'll help me pin without having to stick my hand in there and pin it. Okay, so I turned it over and did the front as well. It's upside down. And so now I just need to sew it. And I am going to use gold thread because that's what the jeans originally were made with, gold thread. And I'm going to use my largest zigzag stitch. And I'm going to start, I usually start around the side somewhere. And as I sew, I will just fold over. We still have these little loops here. I will just fold that over, sew, and keep doing that, making sure all my little loops are going the same direction. And get that all sewn on all the way around. I have my machine set on my largest zigzag. I'm going to remove this front plate and just slide the top in underneath the needle. And I'm just going to take my time and sew all the way around. Here's what it's looking like so far. Now that denim will fray a little bit right here and that'll be really cute. And keep in mind, I know quilt toppers aren't something we run across often at a thrift store, but there are lots of sheets that have fun patterns. I have found twill curtains and made a skirt out of that before, or something like this where you wanna use a little denim an oversized skirt that has a fun pattern that you can pleat and add to a pair of jeans. All right, on to the next step. Okay, next thing I want to do is cut everything out of this shower curtain. I'm going to cut the girl out and all the butterflies. I like to stay on the edge of the pattern or slightly outside when I cut. That's one of my favorite things to do. So I'll get that done. These shower curtains, they're 100% polyester fabric. 
I compare them almost to like umbrella fabric. They don't feel super fabricy, but they're not plasticky either. And I did another project on a pair of overalls where I used a butterfly shower curtain and they turned out really cute. Okay, I'm going to sew the girl on first. So I am just going to get her positioned where I want and pin her all on. Now her arm I'm going to have to cut off separately. So I'll play with that and I will pin it on right over top of these pleats. I kind of laid out these pleats, how they would hang naturally. I'm going to lay her right over top and I will pin right over top of those. I have my old cutting mat under here so I can pin easily. Cardboard works good too. I like to use like a priority box that's flattened out if I'm not using my cutting board. Okay, I have her all pinned on and now I have to sew her on. And so I will just use a gold colored thread Stay close to the edge with a fairly small straight stitch and just go all the way around. Here's her little arm. I had to cut it off of her and pin it separately. Okay, I'll go get that sewn. Okay, my lovely lady is all sewn on. Now I want to do some butterflies. Okay, I placed three butterflies on the front. One is just going to overlap that denim a little, a little one over the pocket. Now I'll lose functionality of that pocket when I sew it on, but that's fine with me. Now how I sewed over the pleats with this one, on this butterfly, I am going to spread that out. I'm not going to pleat it underneath, but it will naturally sort of pleat back together again after I sew it. So I'll flatten that out. This one I'll sew right over top of those pleats. And this one, you know, just a simple straight stitch all the way around. I'll get these pinned on and I'll turn it over and show you what I've done to the back. It's a little bit different. Now on the back, I'm just doing two big butterflies and these are from a different shower curtain. They were from the overall project that I did. And I just took this big one, covered up most of the seam of that denim. And I am going right over top of the pleats with this one. Now this blue one, I'm spreading that out and I'm not going over top of pleats. Now I just have to get those pinned on when these are all pinned on, I will just sew it all at once, the front and back, just like we did the lady. Stay close to the edge with a straight stitch, coordinating thread. Okay, before I sew everything on, I wanted to show you, I decided to add another little butterfly right there. Okay. Appliques are all sewn on. Now I want to add some details at the bottom. Okay, I have this little hot pink pom-pom fringe. I can't remember where I got it. I think it was either Amazon or eBay. Now this has a raw edge still down here and I am just going to sew that on the outside along that edge to finish it off. And I just will use a coordinating straight stitch. Okay, the pom-pom fringe is also on, super cute. Now I want to do a tulle ruffle. Now I bought green and hot pink at Hobby Lobby. I bought three yards, which I probably only needed two, but I always err on the side of caution and get too much. <laughs> so 
what I want to do, this is really long, I am going to cut a few five inch strips all the way down this whole thing. I don't know how many I'll need, two or three. So I'll get those cut five inches wide. Okay, so I ended up cutting out two strips of that tool. If I need more, I'll cut more. Now I turned my skirt inside out and I am going to mark a guideline to sew the tool. So from the bottom of the skirt, not the fringe, I am going to mark one inch all the way around the bottom of the skirt. Now I have my guideline all drawn on. I'm going to take the skirt and my tool over to my machine and I'm going to start anywhere and lay it on top of my line. I know this is really thin and hard for you to see probably, but I'm just going to use a gold straight stitch, gold colored thread, start it here, and every two inches, I'm going to, well, every about every two inches, two and a half. Pinch it about an inch, fold it over, and sew over top of it. Pinch another piece, overlap it on top of itself about an inch, sew over it, and continue doing that all the way around the bottom of the skirt. Now I'm using gold thread because it tends to hide very well amongst different colors like this, so I will go get that sewn on. Okay, so I'm at the end of one piece of tool. I need to start the second. And I am just simply going to overlap it. I don't see any need to seam these together. And just continue on. Okay, turned it right side out so you can see how cute the tool is with this. Okay, so now I have green tool same, I have the same three yards. And on this one, I want this to be almost floor length, this skirt. So I am going to cut this um, nine inches tall, two strips. This only took two. So two strips of nine inch wide green tulle. And then I will turn this inside out again and I will pleat and sew it just like I did this right on top of that same line that I stitched with the pink. And you can barely see that line on here because it's the gold thread. Okay, I'm going to get the green done. The beauty of tulle, it does not fray. So you do not have to worry about finishing the edges. With the green, I'm going to do a little more pleating than I did with the pink. Just make my pleats closer together. Okay, it's all finished. How stinking fun is that? Okay, I'm gonna go style it and show you what it looks like on. Okay, here it is all done. I put on some pointy red mule shoes, little red tops, some fringy earrings. Now it's still warm here, so this would be great for summer, but with the cooler weather coming, this would be cute with a big slouchy red or white sweater, some red or white boots. You could do a big butterfly applique on a sweater if you wanna get kind of matchy matchy. So fun. Now, I'll slow it down in a second so you can see the details, but I want to talk a second. Let me come in a little closer. Okay, so this is for those of you who are creating to sell. What I've learned from all my years of selling online is that I know my stuff is not for everybody. It's a little quirky sometimes, a little weird, a little gutsy, but if you get in your head, and you create 
Oh, what would the average person like? You're going to create average priced items and plus stifle your creativity. I promise you there are people out there hungry for one of a kind, unique, over the top pieces and they're willing to pay a good price for it. So have fun. If this is your artistic outlet, your creative outlet, go for it. Don't try to stay in the middle and please everybody. All right. I thank you so, so much for watching. I'm going to slow it down and do a little spin.